Not too long ago, artist Kehinde Wiley unveiled his portrait of President Obama, a pretty decent likeness seated in a comfortable chair and surrounded by, well, what else? A lot of leaves. Leafiest of all leafy portraits this is. It's all photosynthesis from top to bottom, and poor Bama-Rama looks a bit stifled amid the masses of green. I don't absolutely loathe it, it's just not something I'd put on my mantelpiece. It's rather what one would imagine if Hallmark put out a series of seasonal Obama cards, this one representing springtime. The mere corniness of the portrait, all stenciled leaves and pertly serious bummer, doesn't bother me. I can be very forgiving like that, but if Bim Bam is to have his portrait permanently installed within a national edifice, he can do a lot better than Kehinde Wiley, a man whose prior artwork reveals an arrogant anti-white racism. A couple of years back, Kehinde Wiley displayed two violent paintings, each of them a portrait of a triumphant and well-dressed black woman holding up the severed head of a white woman. It appears that the beheadings have just taken place, since each of the black women holds a knife in her right hand. The artist explained that the images represented the ancient biblical story of Judith and Holofernes. Wiley also explained to New York Magazine, quote, It's sort of a play on the kill whitey thing. To be fair, this statement did come padded with a bit of art world gibberish about, quote, broadening the conversations and, quote, notions of beauty. And while the racially cucked journalists at the prestigious magazine shook their heads in amazement at the black man's genius, the rest of us thought, what the hell? The kill whitey thing? That's a thing? Like duck-lipped selfies are a thing? Like Oreos dipped in milk are a thing? And truthfully, if genocidal sentiments have gotten to be a, quote, thing with which we, quote, play in our culture, we've got bigger problems than cheesy presidential portraits. Art critic Walter Robinson writes that such an image, quote, suggests with jovial brutality that Judith would prefer to be done with white standards of beauty. Call it the Quentin Tarantino School of Art, and if you're of a mind to protest an image of coldly administered and racist butchery, you must be too square or too white to cope with the nuances of the street justice aesthetic. Kehinde Wiley and his defenders in the lamestream media insist that his detractors must all be literal-minded huckleberries from flyover regions of America, but this is a puzzling retort given that there's nothing figurative whatsoever about these works. All we're shown, literally, is a black woman holding the severed head of a white woman, and there is, literally, no background or context in the picture. There aren't even any details or props to indicate that this is a reference to the apocryphal tale of a Jewess slaying an Assyrian general. It's time to call bullshit on Kehinde Wiley, who seems to invoke these historical references as a means of sneaking some kind of artistic legitimacy into these appalling images. In Kehinde Wiley's oeuvre, it turns out that there are two kinds of painting, the kill Whitey kind and the replace Whitey kind. Wiley's aesthetics of replacement are as follows. Take a fine painting from Renaissance Europe, scrub out all the inconvenient white people, and replace them with renditions of suitably dark-skinned and urban folk adopting classic poses. This is a pretty good summary of most of Wiley's work, and the overall tone is one of Irsat's gravity, like the gothic script tattoos that gangster wannabes put all over their bodies. Public Radio International fawns over Wiley's work, saying of his Paris show, quote, The results are both beautiful and surprising to the viewer. Kehinde Wiley's work is trendy, to be sure, and while woke blacks all over America whine about cultural appropriation, the artistic elite in the West seems intent on shoving aside white Western heroes and replacing them with black people. Idris Elba is the black replacement for the white Roland Dischain in a movie adaptation of Stephen King's The Dark Tower. There are also rumors that the same actor may be cast as the next James Bond. In a similar case of racial switcheroo, the BBC recently cast a black man as Achilles in a historical drama about the fall of Troy. I don't believe that any of the white liberal studios in England or America have a legitimate artistic objective here, Rather, it seems to me that the Western entertainment industry is either testing the self-respect of its viewers or trying to creep them out, especially if those viewers are white Westerners. 
The prankishness of this aesthetic of racial bait and switch calls to mind the neo-Marxist vandalism of Western monuments happening all over Europe and America. The tendencies of this sort of Afro-fascism have been nothing but destructive. After all, blacks are free to tell stories about their own heroes, connect with their own mythologies, display their own virtues, and rescue their own damsels from distress. But they don't. Instead, black contemporary culture focuses on criminality, exploitation of women, and bragging of one's access to an unlimited supply of Benjamins and cocaine and pussy. Meanwhile, black men are the most unemployed and unemployable subset of Americans. Between the glamorous criminal fantasy and the undignified, depressing reality, there doesn't seem to be an excess of virtuous archetypes for black men. Not, that is, unless a black face can be glued onto the positive masculine archetypes from Anglo-European culture. Kehinde Wiley told Public Radio International, If black lives matter, they deserve to be in paintings. I couldn't agree more. And we're still waiting for Kehinde Wiley to produce an original artwork depicting black people.